I am Dr. Louis Safranik. I'm a graduate of Harvard Medical School, a board certified internist, and by virtue of my training at the National Institutes of Health, a specialist in infectious diseases. Nearly 30 million people have died of AIDS in the past 30 years. In the United States, gay men continue to account for the majority of HIV cases, and the, ep the epidemic continues to be fueled by the promiscuity of gay men. This was documented in a study organized by the Center for Disease Control and published in the Annals of Internal Medicine in August of 1983. The study looked at gay men with AIDS in a large matched control group of gay men without AIDS from around the United States. Both groups averaged 35 years of age. Gay men with AIDS had averaged more than 900 different sexual partners by the age of 35. Gay men without AIDS had averaged, about, had averaged more than 400 different sexual partners by age 35. A similar study of gay men in Annals of Internal Medicine in 1984 documented an average of 788 different sexual contacts by an average age of 33. Most of these were one-time sexual encounters. The average age of first sexual contact with a male averaged 15 and a half years. Both studies also documented the use of illegal drugs by majorities of gay men. These studies and others depict the extreme sexual promiscuity and lifestyle of gay men that continues to drive the epidemic of HIV as well as other sexually transmitted diseases. These behaviors represent a dangerous and repre reprehensible attitude to human sexuality. The effects of these behaviors spill over into the larger community and exact a toll from women and children who, had, who are inadvertently infected with HIV and other sexually transmitted diseases. The cost to treat the more than one million HIV patients in the, in the United States at an estimated lifetime cost of three to five hundred thousand dollars will be over three billion dollars, a cost that will largely be paid by taxpayers. The law criminalizes pedophiles, polygamists, and prostitutes. I urge the members of the legislature to reject LB 485 that criminalizes business owners who see that the differences such as I have highlighted are in fact a legitimate basis for discriminating homosexuals from others who in particular circumstances they might choose to hire. I would also urge the legislature not to pass 388 uh, bills 380 and 385 or any other bills that suggest that the gay lifestyle or any of the LGBT lifestyles are equivalent to the healthy sexual norm of sex within the context of marriage between monogamous men and women. Thank you. Yes, yeah, Senator Christensen first and then Senator. Thank you, Chairman. Are you trying to say these are bad people? That homosexuals are... No, no, no. You know, no, in your no, last no, comparison, no, no, I just want to clarify. I, I do not see them as bad people. As an infectious disease specialist for the past 30 years, I've had the privilege to treat countless homosexual patients and their loved ones. But as in the case of LB 380 and 385, I view their behaviors as inappropriate models for children whose placement is under the control of the state. Earlier this week, I attended a legislative hearing regarding LB 131, the Tobacco Free Schools Act. That act will prohibit the use of tobacco products by students, staff, or visitors at any time on school property. A proponent of the bill indicated it would prohibit someone attending a high school football game from chewing tobacco in the parking lot. Does this mean that the me person is chewing tobacco? Time out. Finish your sentence, and then we're going to ask Senator Chambers to get, ask his question. Does this mean that the person chewing tobacco in the parking lot is a bad person? I don't think so, but as the speaker pointed out at that session, chewing tobacco is modeling behavior that a child should not see as normative. Therefore, that bill would penalize such behavior right, in the interest right, of our children. To, let's go to Senator Chambers' question. You are <coughs> doctor. You're a medical doctor? I am, sir. Did you say you're from Harvard? I took my degree from Harvard. Okay, and where do you practice now? In Omaha. And where were you practicing when you dealt with all of these infected homosexual men? 
I've been dealing with them from my time uh, here in Omaha at the National Institutes of Health uh, on the faculties at so the University of So this wasn't in one location, this was during the course of your career as a doctor? Yes. And how long has that career been in terms of years? Uh, let's see, that would be Roughly. about 30, going on 35 years. Okay, now you say these individuals, you had individuals who had 900 sexual partners in a given period of no, time? No, I didn't have that. That was the average documented in a large study in the Annals of Internal Medicine. And there's whoever gave that, put that study together. Mm -hmm. The Center for Disease Control. Say it again. The Center for Diseases Control yeah, in Atlanta. About the individual, some individual did the study, is that correct? Uh, a group of physicians from around the country. So they combined the information they had and came up with those statistics that you gave to us? They did. Well, is it a conclusion from that study if we accept it as being valid, that one person may have had 700 to 900 sexual partners? Actually, the results of the study were that the average number of sexual partners by age 35 was that many. By age 35, so that meant during their entire lifetime up until they were 35? Yes. This is an epidemic when we talk about HIV AIDS. Would you agree? Yes. And it's not going to be wished away. Do you agree with that? We cannot say, I wish it would go away no. and it would go away. It has to be addressed, in other words. Yes. Do you agree? Do you agree or disagree? I agree. Okay. Now, since we know that this kind of activity is going to be engaged in, do you recommend that people engaging in this kind of activity use condoms? I think people should take every measure possible to prevent this. Ideally, they would be uh, engaged in monogamous relationships. But that, if that's not going to happen, for example, Ms. Reagan... But, but, but sir, I think it's important in the law <laughs> that we embody the norm that we wish just as we're not going to stop people from smoking no, tobacco, no, 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 but the law, the law will Because we're going to be here till midnight. Just, just let's question, answer, question, answer. Is it your view that people who engage in this kind of conduct should use condoms if they're going to engage in it? Or do you think they should not use condoms? They should, they they should take whatever protection they can. Mm -hmm. They should use them? Yes. All right. Now, when it comes to HIV AIDS, should there be educational programs explaining to people how this virus is contracted and what can be done if it happens to be contracted? Um, when you say educational programs, do you mean for adults? Where they're given who, who public are information about HIV AIDS, how to avoid it if possible, Sure, and that information is widely available, needless okay. to say. Now, when we come to the bill that we have before us, talking about making it against the law to, dis to discriminate against somebody in employment because of their sexual orientation, is it your view that everybody with that orientation is engaged in a sexual relationship? The average person is. But not all. If you say average, you mean some or not. Is that correct? Uh, I, I don't know uh, based on any data. Well, as a doctor, uh, I, I, would, I would say most of the gay patients that I encounter are engaged in You're large numbers patients. of sexual relationships. We're, we're not just talking about patients in the law. It's the law that will cover every situation in society. I'm not aware of any doctor even following the scientific method, and maybe because of that, who will speak in absolutes, that maybe most people who get pancreatic cancer are going to die. And there's not going to be much time elapsing between the onset of symptoms and the death. Pancreatic cancer is horrendous. But I still don't know that it's a doctor who says 
that every person who will ever get pancreatic cancer is going to die. Now I'm going to ask you, would you take it as an absolute that whoever gets pancreatic cancer is going to die? Yes. Okay. Because all of us die, sir. From, <laughs> from pancreatic cancer. If you think, if you think of it. From pancreatic cancer. Do I think that every person who has pancreatic cancer will die of pancreatic yes. cancer? No, he might be in, in a car accident okay. before he dies of pancreatic So not cancer. everybody who is homosexual is going to be actively engaged in a sexual relationship. Isn't uh, that true? Ask me that again. That's right. I don't have anything else to ask. Uh, okay. Thanks, doctor. Okay, let's uh, go to the next.